we are celebrating the baptism of our Lord. And so we have this reading from Matthew. There's one in Mark, and there's also one in Luke, and they're all a little bit different. But today we have Matthew. I saw something on my Facebook from one of my clergy friends. Actually, I saw two things. One of them was of a church with a sign in front of it. A church sign. And it said, skateboarders will be baptized. <laughs> I didn't know the baptism was punishment. <laughs> and the other one I saw, Jesus and John are in the river Jordan. And uh, it's been indicated to uh, John that verse. So Jesus said he's going to go under the water. And uh, he's asked for something different. And John says, I'm John the Baptist, not John the Angry. <laughs> Why doesn't John want to baptize Jesus? Well, he's been preaching about sin to sinners. He has said to those who gather around him, particularly the Pharisees, etc., you brood of vipers. You brood of vipers. And he said, don't expect that you will be saved by your father Abraham. You're responsible for yourselves. Repent. Now, we have a tendency to think of repent as being, I'm sorry. Now, it should be, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. But repent really means to turn away 180 degrees away from whatever it is that you're doing. I wonder if it was, there was something Jesus needed to turn away from. Not necessarily sin, but what about his life before? His life lived in Nazareth with his parents. And with Joseph and David Carpenter. Perhaps that was what he needed to turn away from. Now it may be that John recognizes the one without sin and therefore thinks, well, oh, why are you going to be baptized? says, that ties me to fulfill all righteousness. That means to fulfill the Father's will. Jesus has not, is not yet in his ministry. What will it be like? We tend to think of righteousness as personal piety. Being a good person. So, if Jesus is without sin, what does it mean that Jesus is baptized? He's baptized just like those sinners that John is railing about. Not because he has sinned, but to identify with these people who are in need of God's mercy. Well, righteousness. Who is this person, Jesus? The church looked back in their scriptures, that would be the Hebrew Bible, and they heard an echo of these words from Isaiah 42. Did you hear it? It says, My chosen who brings me delight. Matthew says, My son whom I love. I said, I will put my spirit upon him. Matthew says, a spirit of God coming from above and resting on him. They found their understanding of Jesus from their scriptures. So what would be the result? What did that Isaiah passage say? He will bring justice. He will bring justice. And this becomes Jesus' vocation. But what does justice look like? It's not a court of law. There's no judge of his gavel or her gavel. <coughs> but for God, it means healing, light to the nations, open blind eyes, free captives, and release, release those in dark dungeons. This is part of God's justice. 
And this is what God promised to the servant, that this is who the um, Isaiah is talking about, and now in Jesus. Jesus does all that is required. That's the way of saying God's will. All that God required of him. Now, we think of our own baptisms. I imagine most of you were baptized when you were babies, so you can't remember that. But if you think about what it means, or what you know, it's meant to you through your life. Well, when I used to teach baptismal classes, we talk about being baptized in the death and resurrection of Jesus. We talk about being baptized into God's family. Paul talks about being grafted on the tree of, of Judaism, in fact. In our more modern time, every baptism, we say the Apostles' Creed, but we also have a covenant that we talk about, where we say certain promises. One of the promises is to seek and serve all persons, loving neighbor as self. Another promise is to strive for justice and peace among all peoples, and to respect the dignity of every human being. And one has recently been added to care for the earth as God's creation. I think that these promises encapsulate what it means to be righteous in God's sight, to be doing God's will. Now, it might not mean that our birth, our baptism, but we affirm it every single time that we bring children and adults to the, to the font. Those promises mean something. Are we doing all we can do to fulfill righteousness, to do the Father's will, God's justice for the world? And that justice, from what we see in Jesus rising out of the water as if he were a sinner, as it talks about in Isaiah, that justice especially for sinners, the poor, the least, the last, and the lost. That's who Jesus identifies with in his baptism. This justice is the root. And root comes from the word radical. When we think of radical, we think of protest marches, stoning, things like that. But it means getting to the root of God's will and doing it. Not just knowing about it, but doing it. Are we ready for radical action? Are we ready to seek and serve others? Are we ready to love our neighbor as ourselves? As simple as my neighbor put up a fence I didn't want. Do we forgive that neighbor? That's a very simple one. But what about the person, what the person who fired that mishap? What about that person? Do we love that person as neighbor? Because that's what it means. Not people who are good, not people who are deserving, not people whom we know. Everyone, everyone is our neighbor. That's why it's radical. It gets to the root of God's desire for the world. God's justice for the world. And that justice came in Jesus Christ. It was given to us to carry out after Jesus' resurrection. Do we see ourselves as radicals? Doing the will of the Father. That is our will.